Hello, um, Happy New Year. Uh, I hope you had a good break and I'm back to work now. I mean I've been working bits and pieces over but relaxing a bit as well, having fun. And um, I've got Chris Akabusi here. I've got the piece, uh, the final piece, the silver piece, which is um, the aluminium resin of Chris's sculpture that um, was first unveiled at the Edinburgh Art Fair and featured on the front of the Edinburgh Even News, so I'm very proud of it. Um, but I just thought I'd show you the processes to get there, so um, a bit of a Blue Peter moment. <coughs> this piece is the ceramic piece that I worked on, and I did an earlier YouTube that took a tour around the piece um, when it was still unfired. So if you actually want to see about it in detail and what's on there, maybe go back and have a look at it. I think it's called Tour Around with Chris Akabusi. But this is the ceramic piece. So I'm, I make, I work on the clay. I leave the clay to dry for quite a long time. It takes about three, four weeks to dry very slowly so it doesn't crack. Then it goes in my kiln in the garage and I have a huge kiln. I mean, th th these are, these are, you know, he's, he's a big torso. Um, but it's a big kiln. It's about nine, it's 90 centimetres top to bottom. And um, the piece goes in there. I get my delightful husband, Peter, who's nice and strong to carry the pieces because they're very heavy. And um, then it's fired. And then when it comes out, I spray it with car spray paint. Now, the reason I sprayed this this colour was because Chris himself wants to have a final piece in bronze. Um, so even though I'm producing the pieces for my show and for me in aluminium, Chris is having one done in bronze. So it's to spray sprayed it in that colour to see what it looked like in that patination. Bronze, you may or may not know, um, is a metal. It can be highly polished, so it can come out sort of golden, almost like brass. And then um, the, the, the people who do the castings, not me because I'm not that clever, but the people who are at the foundries who do the castings, um, can then patinate it and in my case I'm very lucky that uh, Lorraine Grandy at Creative Art Casting she's very good at working the finished foot piece so she will patinate it however we want anyway so that's why it was coloured like that right I'll just shift this oh, goodness me Right, so that was the first stage. This here is the piece, the next piece of the, the puzzle, in that after I finish spraying it, it goes off to Lorraine, and Lorraine coats it, first of all, with silicon, gets a silicon cover for it, oh, good echo, um, which is great because it picks up all the details, that my work is quite intricate, and the lovely thing about the silicon stuff is that it, it will even pick up things like fingerprints, it's so amazing. Anyway, that's like that, and then she backs it up with fiberglass and resin, um, which will support it because the silicon's floppy, and then she casts into it. So the next stage, uh, this piece, This piece is the, the final piece as part of my design um, and he's the first of the Olympian series and as you can see he's very shiny. He's been made with aluminium resin so that the upper surface has got the powdered metal um, set into it in a, in a gel coat. Then it's backed up with fibreglass and resin to reinforce it. So although it's got sort of like a semi-precious metal on the surface, it's more reasonable to produce in terms of um, production costs than the bronzes. The bronze costs multiple thousands to do because the, the metals are so expensive. Um, I mean, these are not cheap to do, but they're, they're, they're a lot more within people's price range. Um, and then it's been highly polished. And it looks like armour. I was just thinking this morning that the back on this reminds me of... Um, Jura did a really interesting drawing of a rhinoceros. I don't think he'd ever seen one. But it had like plated armour on its body like this. Not calling Chris a rhinoceros. Hi Chris. But um, yeah. Anyway, hope you like it. Bye.